well, there's always this biggie, which is how do you make the perfumes last longer? Mm-hmm. Which not not everybody wants because sometimes you might want to put a perfume on in the morning and say, it's like, oh, wake me up, and then round about lunchtime you think, hmm, I could do with something a little bit more sophisticated, or whatever. And then in the evening you think, hmm, I'll put on my nice jasmine. So not everyone wants a perfume that lasts all day long, but a lot of people do. Um, how do you do that? And it's experiment. There's there's no secret. Because if there were a secret, then everybody would do it. Mm-hmm. And even, like we said, the big companies do thousands of mods, modifications, that is. Try not to be too technical. Um, in order to find out how things... We, we talked about this, their performance. They, mm-hmm. they come on stage and go, I'm a perfume! Uh, mm-hmm. and sorry, that's been... Uh, th- that's not what I can do. <laughs> you know that. But, um, it is, basically. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'll do, fine. I, I, I should be a perfume. Um, but... Fixatives. We thought we'd talk about fixatives. And fixatives... Can they fix it? Um, so they fix things in place. That's the idea. They kind of glue down the more flighty molecules so that they last longer. And what used to happen before synthetics were invented was that musk, um, civet, ambergris, those things would be used, the animal materials would be used to fix things in place. They'd leave them for six months to macerate and then you know, the lemon would last a little bit longer, the lemon would lift the musk, the musk would keep the lemon down. They don't react together as such, they don't t- change into something else, but they they bond, mm. not chemically, just like in a friendly manner. <laughs> so, um, let's talk about musk, let's do a musk, because it turns out that, although we don't use natural musks now because they're endangered, the goats, I mean, some people do because they think it's authentic to use dead things. But, you know, I don't think that. <laughs> and anyway, it's illegal. So, uh, but this is a musk called ethylene brassolate, which is s- seriously sticky. We're, we're looking for stickiness in materials, both naturals and synthetics. Because hmm. um, I tend to picture them as like um, balls covered in Velcro. And what you've got is the big ones with the hooks on and the little flighty things with the fluffy parts. And if you throw them all together, I mean, they can be removed, but the, the little flighty ones are less likely to blow away if the Velcroed on to a big sticky one. Yeah. It's really technical, this, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's really serious chemistry. Um, so, now, I've... I love Some ethylene people, brassolate. I, I'm glad you love ethylene brassolate. Um, I just wish that it was more intense. I wish it was more powerful. What, or is this diluted? Well, this is diluted to 15%, but when it's at 100%, it doesn't smell more intense. Oh, right. It's, it almost needs the ethanol, the alcohol in it, to, to before you can smell it much. Oh. Um, uh, I just said an actual official um uh didn't I? <laughs> like, uh, yes. It is softened in the background, but it just it hums on forever. Yeah. It's very Moorish. That, that police scientist I met who said ethylene bracelet lasts for ages in her her um bowls when she's trying to wash out the experimental bowls she's doing. The ethylene bracelet lasts forever, she said, just like cocaine. <laughs> and it wouldn't be the same without a helicopter, would it? So, but this is one of those musks that is really, really low. Mm. So, Must be pointed out that the cocaine is for work. Oh, this was, and this is the police woman. <laughs> yeah, 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 the I'm police just scientist. Out. It's yeah, not the getting in trouble. No, it was very funny. I mean, there she, she was like wearing her tweeds and very down to earth and just, I really wasn't expecting that. It's all ethylene bracelet. It's just like cocaine. And because in, in her, as far as she's concerned, she was yeah. analysing it. It was taking ages yeah. to wash out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so 
Yes, the, the, the longer it's on the stick, the more it, well, it then starts to evaporate, starts to go up my noses. But it, it, it is just the super mask. Very soft, very backgroundy. Some people can't smell it. But they might be, their brains might be looking for something else. Mm. Sometimes pointing out these things, it's like saying, set your brain to a cream-coloured soft duvet and try and smell that. If people think they're looking out for a musty smell, so that they think musk is mm. more intense and animalic, nothing happens because they're kind of smelling in the wrong place. Like, it's, it's very um, interesting. I am reading a book at the moment about uh, evolution, right? Mm. And it, you just reminded me with the, th with the fact that some people can't smell ethylene bracelet. 3% of our genome is our three percent of our genes yeah. are dedicated to smell three percent it's like it's an enormous amount of genes it's, that we have that's yeah considering but out of all of the smell receptors that we have um the genes for 200 smell receptors are inactive and turned off down the evolutionary line mm. so at some point back in history we had 200 more smell different smell receptors so there's 200 things that we can't smell. That we used to be able to. That we used to be able to smell. But because we became visually prominent, yeah. and we didn't necessarily need those smells to survive, if someone didn't have it, they didn't die. So therefore, this gene being switched off just mm. survived. Mm. Mm. It's, just, well, it's just an interesting can, bit. It is, it is, thank you. <laughs> but we can, you can also, you, I mean, you can get better at smelling. Yeah. And... I mean, the whole pheromone thing, they, that got switched off. Yeah. I mean, that's exactly. vestigial. We have a pheromone detector, but it's yeah. not connected to anything. Yeah. So yeah. we can't perceive them. No. Which is really quite funny, considering the amount of money people sm spend on things they think are pheromones. Yeah. And also how, how much they will argue with you that pheromones do exist. Yeah, <laughs> that, that we do, rather, that we the, do. Yeah. There is such hope that there is this <laughs> magical material that at some point will just... Yeah be the ultimate in attraction yeah um, I'm gonna give you a thing Thanks. the other very interesting thing I think is that over these millions of years of our evolution we can smell ethylene bracelet which doesn't exist in nature yeah so we have a thing which can detect ethylene bracelet yeah, yeah. so anyway do you know what this is um, I do yeah yeah I do yeah so is it if I say, is it benzoin or labdanum or apopinax? Oh, then I don't. <laughs> okay, it's labdanum. What, did you think it was in I recognise the smell. Yeah, this is the, the, the clear labdanum, labdanum yeah. clear, okay, e easily pourable. So this is a fixative of the old school. This is natural, wow. taken from the, the rock rose. And it almost smells sticky. When, when you're working really with it, it's sticky. Yeah. Um, I don't know if this is backed up by anyone else, but in my experience, the stickier the material that you're actually working with, the more of a fixative it acts that's, as. That's interesting. I think that's just about grammatically correct. I work my way <laughs> yeah. around that one. That's in that's. Yeah, I, I mean, mean literally when they're something. sticky. Yeah. There is possibly something in that. Yeah, I can't think of anything that's sticky that doesn't last. Hmm. Mm. Interesting. So, um, and to the to the point at which we're actually getting into the powders here, because uh, I mean this is one of those which does last, does hold things in place. Quite influential. Some of the fixatives, and um, they're low slope materials. They don't interfere greatly in the aroma of your fragrance they just help it last longer and you know travel a bit further some of them make their presence very felt and this is one of them i know what this is mm -hmm. it, someone has tinctured a battenberg yes <laughs> <laughs> this is tincture of battenberg this is this is coumarin yeah so coumarin is the molecule which exists in tonka beans but it's been most of the stuff that we use is synthetic now because mm. it's 
not too expensive. The helicopter's back. It's a lovely coomerin, isn't it? Coomerin is amazing. Not everyone likes Battenberg. Mm. I actually am not fond of the cake, but mm. I am fond of the aroma. But coomerin is one of those which Guerlain used in their Guerlainade, which is basically a, a battalion of fixatives blended in bergamot that they used at the end of the 19th century, beginning of the 20th century, as a base for all their fragrances. Oh, wow. And coumarin was in it, vanillin was in it, um, synthetic musks, heliotropin, and then all mixed up in bergamot. And that was their, like, the, mm. the thing that everything sat on. So, um, and, and I've, I've made my own which it, it's in the festival fragrances which is coming out um, and I might tell you what I've made it with you've made your own I've made my own sort of uh, accidentally it's called a magic no miraculous mystery base because it's mm -hmm. not magical mystery but the the miraculous mystery uh, I've put in labdanum and coumarin and oak moss and vanillin and Icery Super and Hedion and some other things, I can't remember because I'm me. Mm -hmm. And I used, I, I made some fragrances at 5% strength. I thought they would be just quick, like body spray light things. Mm -hmm. And then I got all these reports back that they were lasting all day, and I was thinking, ah, <laughs> I've made a thing. Um, and and it, it, it's real, it is real. The thing I have made. Um, just lasts and I think we kind of need to experiment and make our own the magical mystery material is this one and that this mm -hmm. this works so this th comes in the kits this comes in the kits because it is Hedia, Isoe Super and Ethylene Brassilate together one to one to one and this it's called the magical mystery material it's not a mystery because I've told everyone but it will give longevity and protection, projection, not protection, <laughs> projection, a certain amount, but not, not too much because also because I'm me um, and I don't actually want to assault people's noses from a distance. Uh, but this turns things into something that smells like a perfume you get in the shops. Mm -hmm. If mm -hmm. that's what you want. Yeah. Not everybody wants that. So this, you can hardly smell it. It's there, though. Here's our friendly raven. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's there. And when you put it with something else, then it, it magics things yeah. to last longer and go further. The, the problem people have in using these things generally is that because they don't smell much, they don't really believe they're going to do anything. Mm -hmm. So they have to overcome their uh, fear <laughs> of of wasting their materials or diluting what they've made by pouring in something they think doesn't smell and then suddenly have you ever poured water on those magical Japanese flowers? Mm. You get little paper yeah. things and you put water on them and they go poof and it's a bit like that the magical mystery material stuff will take in your, yeah. your essential oils which have been you know, had a lot of the life extracted from them in the process mm -hmm. you put these back in and they go whoa I'm a flower again yeah yeah so um yeah, it's not just fixing, mm -hmm. it's also opening up. Yeah, I suppose uh, it's like um, adding water to watercolour paint. Yeah. The paint doesn't really spread and it doesn't, doesn't really, really do, do anything. anything until you put water on it, this yeah. is true. It, that is quite a good one. I'm going to go uh, old school now. I, mean, we I don't think we can talk about all of these, otherwise we will be here till Christmas. <laughs> but... Mm. Because you, there are, there are. This is natural. Mm -hmm. I mean, partly you can tell that like, yeah. it's coloured. Not all synthetics are colourless, but most of them are. Not a clue. Oh, moss. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, so I'm not switched on. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not plugged in. I've been away for for a couple of weeks, you so my nose is my nose is forgotten. Of up a few mountains and blown away in a gale and that's what yeah. happens to you. <laughs> so 
But you've basically got, so you've got old school, you've got Middle Eastern, Mediterranean, 5,000 year old tradition materials like labdanum, apoponax, benzoin and styrax I've got here. We could smell them more but you know since we can't. We still can't do smell vision. Yeah. Maybe I will just say those are those are they. Oak moss joins that particular crowd, but a little bit later on. You then move into the really old school synthetics. So you've got coumarin. I've I've got vanillin here, and I've got ethyl vanillin because. So it's like chemists say vanillin. Perfume people often say vanillin because yeah. because we say vanilla, we don't say vanilla. Um, but either of those things. Vanilla and coumarin is quite a classic combo, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, that that would form the like the pre nineteen forties gourmand style, the, you know, the tasty things, mm. and sort of light light squidgy tasty ambers. Yeah. Okay, so. When ethyl vanillin came out, because vanillin exists, exists in nature, ethyl vanillin actually doesn't. But this is this new Norwegian one which is eco friendly to produce. Yeah. So, um, this is like super creamy luxury ice cream. Really so, is. you put this in your fragrance, it will, it will be noticeable. Mm. But it, it sticks it like glue. But also it's one of those which is now described as top, mid and base note because you perceive it through the life of the fragrance. It's an all-rounder. Yeah, it is. It's not actually sweet. It's just it reminds humans of sweetness generally. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, of course. Because yeah. we associate it with cakes. But I've had vanillin, well, more vanilla, I think, I don't know which, sprayed on uh, fish. On, on sushi. Wow. Sashimi in, in uh, the Fortnum and Mason's launch party for when, was that 2016? Wow, that sounds yeah. good. Yeah, so it doesn't make the fish sweet, it just makes it aromatically vanilla. Wow. I'm going to try putting some in some hummus. <laughs> <laughs> try, try vanillin on your um, pesto or something. Yeah. Right, now I think there's one that gets missed out quite a bit, but in my experience, uh, this is another which causes fragrances to last. I put this in the same class as the ethyl maltol and coumarin. A nice silent film in which we see. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> and I cough. Um, so I give you a hint. So, is yeah. it floral? Is it fruity? Is it woody? Is it oh, citrusy? I think I this. What is it? Is it ivory super? No. Oh. This is raspberry I'm, ketone. Wow. Wow. I'd... So if I say freeze dried raspberries to you, yeah. Does it? Yeah. It's also quite woody. Hmm. <laughs> I'm, I'm, it's funny, I'm now trying to think. But if somebody says, "Oh, that one reminds me of this," I have to go back to it and go, <clears throat> "Oh, do I get that from it?" And sometimes I see what they mean, and I don't always. I'm so I'm so. This just just says jam to me. It says the bottom of the pan. After you, you're scraping it, it's, it's been boiling mm. all day, and it's, but it's very slow to rise up and. Mm. There's a hint there. If you don't get it on the stick for the first ten minutes, it's probably going to be a good fixative. Interesting. It just—it's like I'm not leaving this stick. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to stay here. Um, but does it? It does it fix itself, or does it also fix the other things around it? Is it just heavy, or is it heavy with the Velcro hooks on it? Mm -hmm. So you have some things you're. I'm just staying here. I'm going to stay here all day, and I'm not moving. Yeah. And in answer to uh, the critics of my accents, I'm Northern, so I'm allowed to do that. Aren't I? <laughs> uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm thinking of certain people when I when I speak like that that I've met. So um, <laughs> yeah, but others 
And I'm like, right, I'm staying here all day, who's with me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's more like my grandfather. Yeah, it's, um... This doesn't smell like I've smelt it before. It's more strange. It's... It, it, it's, it is odd how it's different when you're bottling it. It's different when it's like... I thought we had a ghost, but I think it's just a cardboard box come to life. Mm. Um... I didn't think we had a ghost. I'm more concerned that we might have a mouse. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think we have. Um, yeah, the, the amount of ghost, the amount of mice that have been incorrectly attributed to being ghosts in yes. London is probably... <laughs> yes. I think, um, it, although we still have the, we have, we still have the, the warm patch on the stairs, but that is entirely oh, yeah. down to physics. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I like to think of it as a presence. Okay, the uh, one we absolutely can't miss out is this. I've also got Sedramber on the table. I do have Isoe Super. I have other musks. We've got Sandalore and, um, uh, oh, Hedion. But this, yes. I don't have a clue what this is. This is Ambrox Super. Oh, um, I mean, I should. <laughs> you, you this spent is bonkers or something. I'll tell you what is really interesting, is that you. So it weird. takes about a week to get it all back again. If you have yeah. been away for that amount of time. But it, it is interesting how, oh, wow. you know, I think that without your holiday, you would have just gone boom. Yeah, probably would have. But it's very, it, it is hard. It, it's not easy to identify things. And if somebody just gave this to me, I would have to th think through what it isn't. Mm -hmm. That's another really good way. It's like process of elimination. Yeah. So, putting yourself in the uh, the place that you think, well, where, where might you have smelled this last? And this for, ne for I took with me, I, I packed some stuff, I packed all my uh, my toiletries kit in an um, empty Ambrox bucket to take to uh, the Hobbit hut I stayed in. And mm. now I smell this and it's like, I'm in the Hobbit hut. <laughs> so, because it, it does yeah. that. Mm. So, this is, this is like super fixative. It has a certain character. I think the Ambrox Super is a little bit more refined than some of its um, cousins that have the same name, but the uh, different names of the same format, same molecular structure. This is uh, they get rid of some of the things which go wrong in the process, you know, the slight variations. So this mm -hmm. is a bit more pure. But it, even a small amount of this will just help fragrances. I've got the Invisible Ben, for example. Mm. That's not a strong fragrance. It's not. It's it's diluted quite a lot because it's got lots of things like lime and grapefruit in it, yeah. which mean that it's not safe after certain levels. Uh -huh. But it lasts like a very strong eau de parfum. Yeah, it does. It does. You get citrusness out of it for two hours, and I put it down to this. Not just this. You can't just stick in Ambrox and hope it miraculizes everything. But a little bit of it, I, no, you want to fix things, you don't, you um, don't lose. So, uh, if I wanted to make my perfume last longer, yeah, I it's a case of factoring in uh, one or two of these things. Good question. So my 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 super fixer has got about seven things in it, I think. Mm-hmm. But I might not want to use them all in the same proportion at the same time. I would typically have a musk or two and rocks if I wanted to do a sticky one. Mm -hmm. I might have probably coumarin or ethyl vanillin or I've actually got ethyl maltol here as well as the candy floss one. But you're going to use that. It is going to make everything smell like candy floss. Mm -hmm. Vanillin. I would probably have one or two of these, uh, the resins, um, usually labdanum. Benzoin's quite sweet, so if, it, if the vanillin's too sweet for you, you can go with benzoin. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of halfway between sweet and cough mixture. <laughs> oh, and of course the alternative to oak moss is vera moss, which is methyl atrotate, smells 
very mossy, but if you put a hint of cologne with it, then it turns into a kind of seasidey, seaweedy, mm -hmm. sea breeze smell. Veramos is a good fixative as well. Another powder. So, uh, me being me, I'd probably, yeah, okay. Couple of resins, couple of musks. Maybe Hedione if I'm going for the fresh air feeling. Maybe Icy Super. Um, but maybe not. Um, raspy Ketone when I'm doing Fruity Floral because I really like my Fruity Florals. So I, I probably, I probably have a combination of up to eight or nine. Mm. Partly well, it's because I want the aroma, but then it all helps. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's as helpful as I can be, I think, on fixatives. Mm. I make things last. It's up to you what you put at the at the top. You don't just want to have Ambrox and Isoe Super and then other light things on the top and hope it works because then you yeah. just they eventually disappear and you're just stuck with this generic, you know, sticky thing at the bottom. It's not unpleasant, but it's it doesn't do anything interesting. Ideally, you want a sort of good transition so that it still smells of itself during the course of the day. Here's a, perhaps a stupid question. Is Are there any things that you can use as a fixative to make things last longer that are odourless? Um, ah, that is a good question because um, it, what's come up on forums sometimes is people think they can use water or DPG. Yeah, so because they're in they're in formulas and no, not really. I mean, one why bother? Uh huh. But no, not really. Yeah. Uh, DPG is that um, the alternative to ethanol? Sort of dipropylene glycol. It's it's a solvent. So sometimes if you've got something, like if you buy your Ambrox, mm -hmm. but you weren't expecting it as a powder, <laughs> you, you want to put it in a candle or something, mm -hmm. it will be supplied at 50% or at 10%, whatever it dissolves at, 10 probably, in DPG. So it's already a liquid. So it's mm -hmm. a, a thing, which is a good solvent, which um, is legal to ship it's not dangerous goods <laughs> mm -hmm. so oh it's these it's not as flam up it's not as dangerous good a dangerous good mm -hmm. um and it, it it's just kind of there it's just really passive yeah that's so odorless isn't it, it really? yeah it doesn't evaporate as quickly but it, there's no advantage to having it in a fragrance really no i mean there generally is some in fragrances because somebody's used it to dissolve the vanillin or because it's been because it's easier to handle the vanillin when it's yeah so oh, sometimes it ends up in a formula, but you don't yeah. add it into a formula. Uh -huh. It's just there because it's come with one of the materials. It also leaves a kind of sort of greasiness on the skin. It's it? a little bit on the kind of oily, oiliness, uh, yeah. residuish side. Yeah, residue. Good word. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just thinking if there's anything we missed out, but I think that'll do. I think that'll probably do. They're all very good things. I'm glad. If I wanted to, if I was brand new to this and I wanted mm -hmm. a nice all-rounder material to have for this purpose? Ah, well I would reckon that, I would recommend the Musk Romandolide because it is nice and soft, it lasts, it is fully biodegradable and it's fully renewably sourced. There we go. And Hedy because that is too. <laughs> I'm going to stop before you go, and, and, and. <laughs> well, must be keto. <laughs> um, definitely labdenum. If you want your natural one, definitely labdenum. Okay. And all of these things. Okay, stop. <laughs> <laughs>